Shalom. Excellent. Thank you very much for all of your time and attention throughout this afternoon. And we've got a fantastic panel here for you this evening to take you home. This is the one we've all been waiting for. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to be very proud to hand over Bianca Best. Bianca, take us home. Thank you so much. And what a treat it is to be here chairing a panel on the day my voice has disappeared. So please, please bear with me if I'm a bit hoarse and husky. I thought it would be better to come and I'm going to encourage these wonderful men to talk a lot today. So um, our topic for this afternoon's session it's going to be fun, it's going to be insightful, navigating the hybrid TV landscape, balancing linear and connected TV in the UK. So it's clearly a hot topic. Um, I come from Publicis, I'm Chief Growth Officer of our Performance um, Division, so I know we talk about this an awful lot. So sitting next to me, um, I am joined by three distinguished experts who are going to share their insights on this dynamic evolution. And I'm going to start with uh, Rhys McLachlan, I have, sitting next to me here. Rhys is the Director of Advanced Advertising at ITV. Rhys, you run ad Advanced Ads. Can you explain what exactly this is, please? OK, uh, thank you and good afternoon. Um, if I may just start before I get into answering the question is, it wouldn't uh, have been our intention for you guys to end your day listening to three white males on a panel. And I think, I think for all of us and for the organizations that we represent, it's really a rallying cry to ensure that we are bringing forward and we are developing people of color and people of gender diversity to present in these instances. So I just want to call that out, that, that none of us planned on this happening. This was, this was inadvertent, right? But we're here. And we are, by all accounts, experts, um, and we will get in and, and try and make this as, as fun and as entertaining and as insightful as we possibly can. I get to do that in my role as advanced advertising at ITV. I run a team that uh, is responsible for our advertising innovation products. So uh, within my remit, we have Planet V, uh, uh, second largest addressable planning and buying platform for CTV inventory in the UK. Uh, and then Ad Labs, where we innovate at the intersection of data, technology, and viewing to create innovative ad formats that work to drive better business outcomes for our customers and for ITV as well, of course. Fantastic. Wonderful to have you with us. And you're a real media veteran. So lovely to be sharing the stage with you. Um, then we have a Sebastian Bus. And Sebastian, you're a director of... Sorry, you want to go? I'm looking at the wrong person. You can go for it. Yeah. It's fine for me. <laughs> Who is Director of Partnership Development at RTL Ad Alliance. And I asked everyone to come up with a fun little tagline as we came on stage today. And your tagline is, successful solution for the future of TV advertising requires team play. Do not hesitate. Collaborate. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, thank you. I mean, uh, that's uh, what, is, uh, what RTL Adelines stands for and what we represent. We are well known as a German broadcaster, uh, also having uh, broadcasters in other markets like the Netherlands and some stakes in many other countries when it comes to broadcasting TV channels. But what we as Ad RTL Adelines stand for and what we aim for, we want to create a pan-European platform uh, that helps European broadcasters, media houses to collaborate because it seems uh, we get pretty obsess obsessive about things we can't do and we are not good at in Europe, but I think we are in a very advantage, uh, advantageous stage and position in Europe. So we'd like to take it more positive and create the platform solutions and products around uh, bringing Europe uh, forward and uh, creating solutions that bring European uh, broadcasters like ITV, ProZeben, to a successful uh, business and foster our possession in Europe. Fantastic, thank you. And then, last but certainly not least, we have Marius. Marius, I'm going to try and say your surname, Leichter. 
Marius Light, who's Senior Manager of Corporate Development at Virtual Minds. And you come from finance and have got a very interesting transition that you've made coming into strategy. Um, would you like to just tell us all about your journey and what you're doing here and the fresh perspective and lens that you bring to this work? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I guess I'm the new guy on stage here. So uh, I came from finance and uh, from the World Your Minds and World Your Minds is part of Preseven. So I was at the broadcaster side of things in finance and looking at the transition of TV, uh, we noticed if you want to participate in digital growth, you need to think about linear TV. And that was for me the driver to really, you know, follow that passion, going to the ad tech side of things and thinking about how can we make, you know, TV advertising, especially the linear side of things, attractive on a digital level. And then it was like, strategy, following that up, agile working models, um, all of that leading me up here, being on stage now, international expansion for the virtual minds and really saying, okay, how can we think TV advertising different from an ad tech perspective? Because it makes absolutely sense from a financial standpoint. And it's always good to have fresh thinking in absolutely. new roles. Okay, I'm gonna start with you, Reese. Um, I want to talk to you about, the, with the rise of connected TV, how specifically is ITV integrating these platforms with traditional linear TV to maximize viewer engagement and ad revenue? That's just the sort of fun question that people want to hear me respond to at 10 past 5 on a Tuesday afternoon. Right, let, let's, let's start by, let's make it a bit of fun. Let's talk and call out the bollocks, which is in the title of this session, right? Balancing linear and connected TV. It's not about balancing linear and connected TV. Linear is connected TV. Connected TV is linear television. We have the second largest, by volume, the second largest consumption of CTV content in the UK is delivered through the ITVX app across the myriad of devices that are IP enabled. So we are an extremely large broadcaster in the CTV environment within which, like on the ITVX app, about 70 to 75% of consumption of content in the ITVX app in the CTV environment is linear television. Like on, on um, Sunday evening we did, I'm not sure if this is a public disclosure at this point, but let, let's, let's just say that the consumption of the live match that we were hosting of the Euros uh, nearly exceeded 3 million concurrent views in the CTV ecosystem via the ITVX app. So this idea that, that, that we have to somehow balance linear and connected TV is a massive misnomer. Connected TV is linear, right? And over the course of time, the entirety of the consumption of ITV's inventory across all formats, fast, VOD, linear, stream, catch up, box edited, whatever you want to call it, it will all be happening in and on CTVs. Right, that, that, that is the ecosystem which we're moving into at a rate of knots. That is what we are planning and strategizing around ensuring that we have a sustainable business future where CTV is the only game in town. Now, it's, it's not about balancing, it's about finding routes in that ensure that you're able to capitalize and thrive with your linear product in an environment where you are contending for viewers that is much broader than the competitive set that we've ever had. Balance is bullshit. Right? It's, not, it's about fully leaning in. It's about stepping out onto that tightrope, which leads me to a balancing metaphor, unfortunately, but it's about just fuck it, going all in. CTV's the future of this business, period. Love it. I love something very emphatic like that. I see you nodding your head, Sebastian. Would you like to just give us your perspective? Yeah, I can, I can only agree, and let's just... I, I like to talk about big screen, no matter if it's CTV, linear, it's just the big screen, it's just the old uh, black uh, box sitting in your living room most of the time, and that's the device and that's the consumption we're talking about. Where it comes from, how it's distributed, we shouldn't care in, uh, too much, and that's the thing we overcomplicate sometimes, I think, especially towards buyers, where we exactly do this, we come up with uh, some slides and try to define CTV and linear TV, and then we mix in some uh, terms and abbreviations like RTB and programmatic and all that fun stuff and nobody uh, gets it anymore and even worse on a European scale it's a fragmented market <laughs> and uh, technology is fragmented Europe is fragmented and I think the biggest challenge uh, we have uh, besides the tequila noise from the right side is to create some scalable solutions uh, that allows buyers to 
buy and uh, execute campaigns on a ideally pan-European scale uh, where uh, buyers can access the premium inventories from all the major broadcasters throughout Europe, no matter if it's linear TV, programmatic, whatever. They want to be seen on the big screen. I think uh, leaning into that, I couldn't agree more because for us, it's about you know linear TV basically bridging the gap to digital and bringing that together and breaking up silos because we want to put things into silos with linear TV, with CTV, but it's all premium content, it's all video, it's all brand safe. And our mission basically is to say, when we talk about linear TV, you know, it's like selling a selling an AI product while you still operate with the Macintosh. And we say we want to change that. So we want to operate digital in linear TV. So real-time decisioning, data enablement, um, planning automation, selling that then digital, CPM, thinking about how you can take that programmatic and then combining that digital with convergent products uh, in our cooperation with RTL. So basically really saying we need to see what we got in linear TV, we need to bridge the gap and uh, yeah, basically rethink in our core how we work that way and if we change the way we operate on that level, we don't think in a silo because we operate everything quite similar and then we have the same products in the end. And that's basically our mission. Sounds easy, right? Sounds like we're sitting here and have the solutions and products and concepts, yeah. but I think well, it's a long way to go still. <laughs> yeah, and that leads me on to my next question. I'm, I live in the world of performance, digital marketing, where we are trying to say goodbye to silos and it's all about cross-channel holistic planning thinking. I want to ask you guys, in terms of data, how pivotal data signals are, what are the challenges and the opportunities that each one of you respectively are facing? I, I, I would even say uh, that goes to the, um, to the start of uh, what you said, Rhys, like data is another thing where we, I, I think, tend to overcomplicate uh, our products, the solutions, the background, and try to explain stuff about data. Again, what we need to achieve is simplified platforms where buyers, like what we see with Planet V, which I think is a benchmark solution in the UK, where we see um, platforms where buyers can access audience, uh, they are, audiences they are after. I mean, we can talk a lot about data and there's a lot of lot, uh, data intelligence behind it. And that's also what we are doing uh, on our side. Uh, of course, having some int intelligent data play behind uh, the products we offer to advertisers. But in the end, it's very simplified audience products uh, where we uh, just put very simple taglines uh, or headlines onto that where we say, okay, you want to target a sport user, you want to target a premium, um, uh, a pre premium time user, uh, whatever segmentation that can be, it's, it's all possible, it's all there, and we should be more simple in how we create and visualize these products, and that's what we're aiming for. Uh, I think leaning into that, it's... I think data is key, really, into you know taking this to the next level. But I think, uh, as uh, Subas said, you said, said um, we're making it more complicated than it has to be. So when we look at it from linear TV, we can really use it to enable real-time decisioning and to think about total reach, total audiences from connected devices. And uh, we can do that with anonymized data. I think the data is there. It's just about taking the first step, using the data in real-time optimization. And then from there, I think the market is developing. I think we have a lot of you know, things going on with measurement, with all of that. So I think there's development in the market. But in terms of, for instance, linear TV, there's so much easy, quick wins when it comes to data usage. We just have to, to use it and centralize it. I think that's the, the main part and just not always be yeah, overwhelmed by the complexity we think it has. Data is just noise, right? It, 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 with, with data, you know, there is too much of it out there. Have you ever been to a concert when the orchestra is warming up before the conductor stands on stage? I think the jobs that we have and the responsibilities that we should assert in our business is, is being the conductor, making sense out of the noise, making it harmonious, making it resonate, making it of value and of utility to our business so that we can drive better performance in our business and harnessing it to drive better business outcomes, repeated that again, 
for our customers and our advertisers, but what we need to be very wary of, I'm just gonna, just, I'm just gonna do all metaphors, fuck it, right? Is in, in the performance world, we are at a disadvantage, right? And unless you are able to accurately and emphatically assert the role that you are playing in driving an outcome that will not happen on your platform, you are in danger of taking a knife to a gunfight. Right? We cannot compete with the plethora, the array, and the utility of signals that a Google or an Amazon are bringing to play in our ecosystem. So we need to be smarter. Right? We, as conductors or choreographers of the dance or the orchestra, we need to be thinking smarter about what signals we are electing to use to drive the maximum performance for our business so as that it resonates for the advertising community who have a much greater array of businesses contending for their ad dollars. It, you, got to be smarter and there is literally too much fucking noise in the data ecosystem at the moment and making sense of that I think is going to be one of the most powerful propositions that any organization can have and any individual in an organization can have we've spent tens of millions of pounds of getting our shit together in this space I'm only just starting to see like the value that is bringing to us but it's hard yards because there is just too much shit floating around in the ecosystem I do fully agree with that. It's interpreting the signals most intelligently, most intuitively. Um, thank you. And thank you for swearing, because it's very hard for us to actually hear <laughs> over the noise. We don't have the luxury of the headphones that you guys have. So every time you swear, it, I can hear it, which is lovely. <laughs> Um, so, thinking about the consumer, you just uh, talked about the customer. What are the best strategies for balancing viewer experience with advertiser demands in a hybrid TV model? Well, I'll, I'll start and run it down. Total TV. We're a total TV business. We, we uh, described earlier, we are linear, we are catch up, we are VOD, we are streaming, we are simulcast. We cover all those aspects. The most compelling propositions that are being bought from us at the moment from our advertising community are our converged propositions where we're using data to effectively stitch together a seamless advertising experience that drives what they need, their KPIs, between linear and all other formats of consumption across our ecosystem. Converge products, uh, they, they are very much how TV broadcasters win with the multitude of channels that they have to play within. Yeah, absolutely. I think Converge products is kind of like, you know, we talk about digital video growth and that's kind of like the new rules of the game that we need to apply to and when we talk about their growth and then if we do conversion products, it's something nobody else can do. So we're changing the game instead of just adapting to the game and I think the, the foundation for that is just changing the way we operate, changing, understanding the value that we have and adapting you know, new principles and how we operate and then basically if the market changes, it's easy to create products that fit to the market because we operate in a way that fits to this change, right? And then we have convergent products, and then you want to sell TV on an auction. It's not, it's not, it's not a problem if you have real-time decisioning work with data. So I think that's the core of it. Yeah, I mean, in the end, it's about uh, anything that resonates to the demand of the advertisers. And the big topic here is addressability and how can we, I mean, you've both said it. I mean, how can we convert the linear TV and the reach is, uh, that is out there, which is still massive, which we sometimes forget because we talk about CTV, we talk about digital, but we tend to forget, even as being uh, part of big broadcasting groups, we tend to forget how powerful and how massive the reach in linear TV is. Is. And that's, uh, that's what I love about these digital events uh, because there's so much new buzzwords and terms and stuff. But in the end, uh, we should look for the easy wins and we should, should look how we can um, tap into the massive reach that is out there and how we can um, yeah, deliver addressability into the linear TV ecosystem, which is there, which sits, which, which runs every day on the big black boxes, on the big screens, on the tra traditional TVs. And maybe, maybe dropping in some numbers, right? We all say the, the finance US... guys the, coming yeah. in, no numbers. I need, to, I need to strengthen my profile. So, uh, you know, we're all looking at the US and everybody's saying, oh, it's changing so quickly, rapidly. But if you look, you know, the, the Magna study is going to tell us up to 80% of Advertising revenue is linear in 2028. In the UK, in 2028, two thirds, it's, I think it's 64% of advertising revenues in four years from now will be made in linear TV. So 
it's a significant you know amount of money so i think that's that's the discussion about ctv is maturing and i think that's that's the the beauty of it because if you think about it you know two three years ago everybody was like ctv only ctv only and now everybody sees okay it's it's a joint effort it's but a wait, hybrid. Wait for Reese. Thing. He's probably having yeah, he, better numbers I see, on the I UK see, he's now. moving. Like, Let's see if I can do this without, without any swearing. Look, linear TV is our superpower, and it's like we were embarrassed about it. It's like we were Clark Kent going into the phone booth, and we were scared to get changed. Right? It's the center of gravity. On Sunday night, in my linear channel, in my linear push channel, we did 19 million people sitting on couches watching that game. Right, that is a superpower that in 2024, no other media platform is able to deliver. Right, we, we, we are a quarter of a century into the digital revolution and entertainment and, and, and across all media channels, and TV remains unparalleled in its ability to put bums on seats and eyeballs on screens at critical moments that bond the nation. Right, and, and that's true. You know, those sporting events, those key must-have events, which are broadcast as linear, remain powerful in every single mature TV market. And we we we're, we've been embarrassed about it. It's it's. I'm not going to swear. It, it it's it, it it's remiss of us to okay. to not be leaning into that super. But harness it. Use new technologies. Use the, use the new distributions. Use the insights and the utility that we have in our data to provide more compelling, more effective advertising products. But don't ever be ashamed of your core superpower. And that's bums on seats in living rooms being entertained by the best content that there is available. I, I really love that. It's kind of like a preach, like we were in a, in a group like um, non-alcoholic group. Like we should be proud of each other. I love that. I'm, I'm here for the drinks. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> we an, all are. I'm an, al like, alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic's non-anonymous. <laughs> right. Before we get to the drinks, though, we've talked very generally about trends. We're talking macro. We're talking about collaboration. We're talking about integration. I want to ask you individually your personal impact you want to have within your organization across the industry as you look ahead to the next 12 months what are you personally committing to and excited about what do you want to unleash on the industry i'll start with you please uh, definitely within the next 12 months uh, my personal goal will be to get more of our broadcasters uh, onto our platform that allows uh, scalable buying of their inventory, uh, but still giving them the control and sovereignty, um, defining the rules, the business rules on how it's being sold and how it's being um, uh, accessed in the end. Is that are you really excited? Sorry? Are you really excited? I Can am. I, I don't look like I'm really excited, yeah. right? I was like, I was a bit sad already. That it seems to be the last question already, but I'm excited. So, but it's uh, it doesn't. It's it a certainly challenge. doesn't have to be the last question. It doesn't have to be. What are you most excited which is, about? Which is so entertaining. It's just time flies. Um, I think for me, it's two things we want to reach. One thing is setting an example in a market on how TV can change, and I think it's got to come in the next two to three months where really all broadcasters collaborate and demonstrate how you know, this transition can go. And I think the second thing for us is in the collaboration with RTL, launching the first convergent product in Germany, covering okay. basically with RTL and even 90% of the TV advertising there, having a convergent campaign that ideally you can buy programmatically and really leading the way with a clear example. I think that's... That will be the two things. And I'm pretty confident. It's not a wish. It's not a wish. Fantastic. We're going to do that. You don't want to only do that in Germany, right? On a pan-European no. scale. Well, With other broadcasters. 100%. 12 months. Germany, other market. 24 months, different ball game. There we go. <laughs> Real life expansion. And what about you, Reese? Uh, it's a brilliantly timed question, because this morning um, we had confirmation uh, that we will be bringing a gun to a gunfight in September, right? So m mark what I just said. It's not something I can reveal publicly at the moment, but we, we had a seminal moment for the, telev television, the UK commercial television industry this morning where some things were signed, right? And guns are coming to gunfights. Let's just put it that way. Wow. Okay. A cliffhanger. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It, it, it's... <laughs> It, it is seismic. The impact of what has been agreed by parties this morning, you will recall that 
Reese, when he was on stage not swearing, said there's something big <laughs> for the UK television industry being announced in September. So I am ghosting that on you now, and you'll, you'll well, have another, the remnants another, of that memory. Another big step in terms of collaboration is that... It, collaboration is at the heart of it, but it's a gun-to-a-gun fight. If you can think of my metaphor earlier, we are bringing a gun-to-a-gun fight. We're, wow. we're taking them on. We're taking Thank on the you. tech giants. Thank you. Well, before we close, because I know you didn't want to end, uh, what would you like to share on our important topic today? One last thought with the audience before everyone gets to the tequila bar. Enjoy your tequila first. Um, and second, I would say really, you know, change the perception of TV and really see that in the age of, you know, growth, video, fraud coming in everywhere else, you want brand safe, trusted media, TV is really, really more modern than ever, maybe, and take that with you. Thank you. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, we shouldn't be too focused on what we do wrong or not as good as the big Google, Netflix, Amazon guys. We should look more onto us and how strong we are in Europe and uh, UK and uh, here and not look too much uh, onto the US and, and all the stuff that's going on there. Let's uh, collaborate and let's work on solutions and products uh, that help us here and uh, let us grow stronger and bigger. So that's, that's really the thing. It's not, again, easy, but uh, we are looking too much uh, onto the other side of the ocean, to be honest. Thank you. And I know you're excited about guns, but oh, tell us no, more. Look, th th this is not investment advice, but the smarter commercial broadcasters are massively undervalued on the stock market. Right, and given what I know about our transformation program and what we've got coming on, what these guys are up to in the European markets, I, I, I would definitely recommend putting in broadcast to shares in your portfolio. Right? We, we are wow. primed and we are equipped to win in a way that, that, that is not reflected in the values of our businesses on the stock exchanges at the moment. Thank you. You heard it here first. Fantastic. Uh, this is not investment advice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for staying with us with so much fun going on just over there. Thank you for wonderful thank you. chats and insights. And, and thank you very much. <laughs> with the voice doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Outstanding. What a fantastic panel to finish on.